if you've got to make a decision, if there's a decision to be made, if, 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 if you have to use a chemical or something like that, because yes. you, you, you can't swap from one system to another overnight, so it's a case of weaning a system off. And um, so you'll be cutting back your chemicals wherever you can, but also making the right decisions, you know, which are the most harmful chemicals, which are the least harmful mm. chemicals to soil life. And you slowly start to turn the situation around. So you see soil life as like the most important thing, is it? Or? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. You're trying to, well, from our perspective, as a risk management tool it is, because one, there's the extra moisture holding capacity from um, the increased root growth that we've been getting with encouraging I guess the soil microlife and around the roots in particular um, and that nutrient cycling for trying to reduce your input costs of fertilisers and so forth um, by having a, a good biological soil food web under the soil working for you that nutrient cycling can happen mm -hmm. and then you're not requiring so much of the external inputs to get your plant to grow well and to grow healthily so you'll find that um, there's something that working for you without having to a lot of cost. So you're sort of implying that uh, taking a more biological approach is actually uh, more economical. Uh, or you mentioned it's less risk. Um, that's, that could be more ec economical, just the fact that there's less risk, because less risk actually is a cost. It's a cost factor to risk. So um, in the two years you've been here, what steps have you taken to, towards a biological way of uh, cropping? Yeah, well, that's just why you're on risk there, you know, to, to, to survive in farming these days, your, your risk factor is, you know, you've really got to just be watching, as everyone knows, that risk all the time. When you're putting a lot of acres in and um, the, the, the costs, um, you've just got to minimise that risk all, you know, all the way along. You just can't be going putting everything up front because um, you, can, you can go down in a big hurry because you can burn a lot in one season mm. if it turns out. So what we've started doing is, um, yeah, we, um, all, all our inputs are assessed, you know, biologically. Um, we start off with, um, if there's summer spraying to do, like I said, we, we'll, we'll graze where we can. Mm -hmm. um, but you've got to be very careful you don't bear things out or not. Um, only so soil coverage is very important soil to Soil coverage is very um, important. Um, when we come to seed, um, picking the right time on, the, on that um, right moisture. Sometimes we've got to go in early, we'll go in with a portion here, um, depending on how much summer rain we've had. So one of the main things is keeping that soil cover so that um, any summer rains on that, we're actually keeping the moisture where it falls. Mm -hmm. So we can actually hold that moisture there so when we, we can take opportunity early sowing times here. Um, going in with minimum tillage and um, but then when we go in, you, be, you know, your, your, your soil, uh, keep cutting back out the, the soil activated chemicals, um, your SUs, mm -hmm. um, and, um, and also what fertilizers, what nutrients you're going to put on. Everything that you put actually into that ground is, is not to be dehydrating to the soil. You know, you don't want, um, you know, high phosphoric acids and things like that going to the soil, which you know, has a dehydrating effect.